Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy, and today I'm so excited to be getting to do a Friend Friday video with my friend Heidi. She has her channel, so I would love if you could go check it out and give her some love. Make sure you let her know that I sent you. And her channel is called Happily Thriving Heidi. And she'll be sharing some super cute Valentine's DIY decor from Dollar Tree products. So make sure you check her out. So for our first project, we're gonna start with one of these crystal candle holders, a little round mirror that you can find in the candle section. In the toy section, we have these little mushy toys and I got three different kinds, and so you'll see the other two later. Some of this lightweight spackling, I got two of those. And then some heart picks from the Valentine's Day section. Some of these little stickers with roses. And then from Walmart, I found this super cute ribbon with the roses on there. Some of these little pink pearls that are self-adhesive some of this iridescent Christmas snow that I got at Christmas time, some hydrangeas, just some random greenery and flowers. And I really didn't know what I was gonna use to embellish our dessert table. So we'll see what I end up using. And then of course our Waverly White chalk paint and ballet slipper chalk paint a glue gun, scissors, E6000, and wire cutters, and then also some Mod Podge, which I forgot to put in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our spackling and get it kind of mixed up in there. It's really kind of crumbly when you first get it, so just mix it up a bit. And then I realized after I added the paint that I just didn't have enough room to stir it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into a plastic bowl so that I have more room to stir and mix it up. So I want the color to be a really light pink and nice and soft. So after I added that, if it's still a little crumbly, you can add a little bit of water. It just takes a little bit longer to dry, but that's okay because we had a lot of cakes to ice. So once I get it to the right consistency, I'm going to take my craft stick and just ice it like a cake. I'm totally not a baker, but this one was super fun and it's also the most messy project you'll probably ever do, but I just went as I would if, if I were to ice a cake and just get it to where it's not flat and I want some bumps and curves and if there's any pieces that are showing through because I didn't paint it first I thought this would stick a little bit better then just cover it up with more of the spackle so now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and just use a knife or just some kind of spatula or something to top it on the top part of the cake and then I'm going to take my snow and just sprinkle it on top and it stays really well and it's not going to move after it dries. So then for the embellishing, I took a couple of these little flowers from, um, they call this baby's breath, but I mean, it's not the traditional baby's breath, but it's okay. It can still be used as that, but it, they're these sweet little flowers. And I just took three of those and then added one tiny little piece of lamb's ear and tuck that under there. And I hot glued them all, but they also will stick into the spackle. So now I'm gonna take my E6000 and apply it to the top of my candle holder and then place the mirror on top of that and just make sure you get it in the middle. I'm totally going out of order here, but I'm gonna now take a decorative cake tray, some styrofoam, um, floral foam, and then a, one of these little cups a veggie storage basket. I thought that looked like a strawberry basket. And a couple of these little round plastic plates. The water glasses, these are plastic also. And then I didn't know which size I was gonna use, but some foil cupcake holders. And so I just took everything outside. Again, I didn't know exactly what I was gonna use, but I just painted them all 
it was a lot easier than doing it by hand. And I used this Krylon chalky finish in bonnet pink and then some white in the Krylon fusion. So I had run out of the spackle from Dollar Tree, but I got this at Walmart and I tried to get fancy and use one of those cake decorating kits from Dollar Tree, but the spackle was just too thick and wouldn't go through there. So I completely wasted a full uh, tub of that. So this was a lot creamier anyway, and I wanna say it was like $7 for this entire bucket. So this is the kind that comes out pink and then when it dries, it'll turn a grayish color. So I ended up adding some of the white chalk paint to it so that when it dries, it would be completely white. So then I took some of that floral foam and cut that in half and then I cut it in half again and then got it to a shape to kind of resemble a pedophor. And so I'm gonna cover that with the spackle and then use my Mod Podge again to make the sides that iridescent snow color stuff. You know, it just dawned on me that I didn't welcome you. If you're here from Heidi's channel and you're visiting, I am so sorry, but welcome. I'm so happy you're here and your being here is just icing on the cake. So here's those other two desserts from the toy aisle. And I just cut off the little tops for both of them because we're gonna put our own tops. And these are really popular and it was all I could do to keep my grandkids away from these because they really wanted to play with them. And so I just put the spackle on top of these as well. And I didn't even bother painting anything because in the end it doesn't show whatsoever. So I just put it on like you would again with the cakes and the icing and the frosting. And I, I was getting really hungry when I was doing this too because the color is so pretty and yummy looking but anyway just get it all on there and then I added some paint on the sides of the cake to make it look like it was layered and so I used it was actually some pink puff paint or something I don't even know what it was it was really old and I just had it on hand so I um, made the lines and then put some more of the iridescent snow to give it some pretties on there and then I'm gonna embellish the tops and the sides of this little wedding cake with the pink pearls. I had originally used that same puff paint to make the little dots on the wedding cake but they because this paint was so old it wasn't coming out right and I didn't like it and so the circles weren't the same size and so I took that off and then covered where it was leaving a pink paint residue and so covered that with the pearls. So then for the top of the wedding cake, I just took one of those heart picks and pulled the heart right out of the little skewer and then hot glued that to the top. But that's when I realized I didn't like those dots, so I'm gonna address that later. So now I'm taking these stickers and I found a really pretty pink rose one and they kind of pop up, so you have to take the little top part off of the flat sticker part. And then I just cut out, there was a red heart with it, so I cut the red heart out and then place the pink rose on top of the little pedophore. So here's where I'm wiping off the dots from the paint. And so to cover up my mess, I'm gonna put the pearls over that. And at first there's these little, the sticky adhesive string that it goes onto. If you cut those, it works, you know, just doing it one by one. But I found it was a lot easier to use my utility knife cut the little pieces off first next to the pearls and then using the utility knife, placing it onto the cake. It was a lot easier. So once that crisis was averted, I added some more of the little baby's breath to the top of the cake and just 
cut off teeny little parts of it and these come on the sprigs with different florals and the ones with the hearts and so I just hot glued those by putting a dot of hot glue down and then dipping it the bottom of it into that hot glue it only stays hot for a little while so you have to kind of work fast but then just put that in there and then added a tiny tiny little leaf to the side just for a little bit of green and greenery So now I'm going to make a dessert stand and I just put some E6000 along with some hot glue in the center of the back of the cake plate and then place a vase upside down in the middle. And I painted most of my items from the back side so technically these would still be um, food safe because there's no actual paint on the surface where you would be placing your food. So now I'm going to make another little pastry stand and I just used the rose ribbon and I'm going to hot glue that to the bottom of this cup. It's going to sit upside down and then I'll place one of the plastic round plates on top of that. Once I got to the back, I cut off the ribbon and I just folded it down and it's got the wired edges so it stays in place. And then I'm gonna hot glue that together. Now because the cup is a little bit thinner towards the bottom of the cup, which would be the top of our stand, I pulled and kind of pinched the top of the ribbon so that it wouldn't be loose at the top of the ribbon. <laughs> which is the bottom of the cup. <laughs> anyway, just pinch it so that there's, you know, no gap in there and it gives just enough so that it will allow you to do this. So now I'm going to take a little piece of the rose ribbon and I'm going to line the inside of the strawberry basket and I didn't even hot glue it I just stuck it in there and it just because of the wired edges it stayed in place going around the corners and then I just placed an empty ribbon spool inside of that and then covered it with some pink tissue paper you won't see this but just to keep it all cohesive and then I took some hydrangeas and cut them rather short and then just stuck the stems into that center of the spool and through the tissue paper so that they stay in place. And then put two more sweet little pink roses in there. And then I cut off any stray stems that I didn't want and that piece was done. So now to embellish the top part of the slice of cake, I took a few of these hydrangea petals and, or blossoms I guess, and then stuck them on top of the slice of cake. And I'm sorry this is a little bit out of frame, but I just took those and hot glued them right to the top. And then I didn't have a leaf that was small enough for my lamb's ear, I'm sure I have it somewhere, but um, I just made one of my own from a larger one and just used my scissors to cut kind of a rounded shape at the top to make it like a lamb's ear. So now I'm going to make three little heart cake pops and I just took my hot glue and placed a heart after taking it off the skewer into the little cupcake foil and then that's going to leave us with two hearts left over for our next project. And so for this, I got two of these cute coffee mugs and the saucers to match. And then two solo cups from a large package. These are the like paper cups. And so we're going to be using hot glue. So you don't want the styrofoam cups. And then some of the roving yarn that I got for $17 at Walmart. And this is yarn that hasn't yet been spun. And I use this quite a bit. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is measure about how high we wanna start the roving yarn. And that's gonna kinda of be the whipped cream to our little, I don't know, chocolate drink of some sort. So I made a line with a pencil just to where I, want, I need to start it so that it won't show the cup. And then I'm gonna roll it around, start it with some hot glue and then roll it around overlapping um, over the cup and then all the way to the top. And then once you get past the lip of the cup, you're gonna need to hot glue on top of the roving yarn so that the layers will stay together. And then once you get to the top, you just kind of make it into a point and tuck it down, add some more glue. And then we'll add our heart to the top of the whipped cream to look like a cherry. And any time that you're gluing something that's messy like this or batting or something, you want to keep your hot glue away from the material and just kind of let it fall down into place. Otherwise, it kind of gathers to the excess glue that's on the tip of your gun and it gets all stopped up and messy. So now I'm putting the heart on and I tipped it over kind of to the side and then I'm gonna take a straw and cut it in half and put both of those into the cups. And then I'm going to cut out some words from my Silhouette Cameo 3. And I didn't have any pink vinyl, so I decided I was gonna use some white and try painting the vinyl pink to match everything else. So this was a science experiment and it did actually work. So all I did was cut out the words and I put kiss me and be mine. And then I took some of my pink ballet slipper chalk paint and a little bit of white and then painted it on to the letters after I had weeded it out. And I probably should have done this in the reverse order. I should have painted it first and then weeded it, taken that other vinyl off because it was on the uh, paper, the backing paper. So anyway, but just so that you know, you can do this. Obviously, it's not going to be something that will stay on for a long time, but it's super cute and that's what these tests are for. So now our next project, we're going to use this home sweet home sign and I just, I was originally going to change the wording to say how sweet it is but I decided instead, once I painted over it with my white apple barrel acrylic paint, that I liked it the way it was with just the one word of sweet. So after I got all of my paint down, I went back in with my sanding block and gave it a distressed edge and around the words, uh, the word, and it just let the back or the original color of the block through the paint so it was kind of like an off-white brownish color so i thought that looked really good so then after that i took a piece of my rose ribbon and i placed it over the back of all of the word or all of the letters so that when you see it from the front the ribbon is peeking through so here's how everything turned out all together. I think it looks super sweet. I got the votive also at Dollar Tree and I really love how simple but elegant but cute this turned out. This would be cute for a bridal shower or a tea party for a little girl's birthday. Again, I'm gonna leave this in my living room so it's good for the big kids too.
So for our final project, we're gonna be using this large Valentine's Day tag. I wanted to use it with the bicycle, but I ended up using it for something different. A package of these little toy Legos. And the first thing we're gonna do is paint the back of it. I actually painted the other side as well, just to kind of lighten the colors on it. So I can still use that if I want to, because I just love the little bike so much. But for this, this was the perfect size for this project. So I just put a couple of coats down of the white apple barrel acrylic paint. And then I'm gonna go back in and make some lines to make it look like a wood tone, kind of like a shiplap effect. And then I painted my Legos. I painted two of them in a darker pink and then two of them in a kind of a pink and white marbleized look or just kind of blended so that you could tell the difference between the two pairs. So to do the wood grain look and make it look like planks, I just took some Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant and I made lines just kind of the same distance apart, but you know, this we don't want it to look perfect and that's a good thing. So I just went in with white and then the elephant and just blended it all in and went in between the lines and took some more of the elephant and just kept brushing it together and blending it and getting it to the look that I wanted. When it's on camera, it looks a lot darker than it is because in real life, it's kind of softer and more subtle. But regardless, this is the method to use and I think it you know, gives it that wood grain look. So after I was done painting that, I decided to go in to the sides with my elephant and just kind of blend in a border that overlapped onto the front so that it looks like, again, a distressed piece of wood. And I just kept adding and you can subtract and it just makes it keep getting better and better if you add the white and take away some of the hard gray and so that it's all nicely blended and soft. So now I cut out another decal from my Silhouette Cameo 3 and I'm gonna take off the top layer of vinyl and can you guys guess what it's gonna say? And this was actually an idea from my daughter. She had found this um, on Pinterest when she was looking for ideas to make a birthday card for her boyfriend. And so it says, I'll never let go of you. And so after I got it all weeded out, I just applied my transfer tape to it and pulled off the backing paper. And then I cut it in two sections so that the I'll never let go or Lego will go above the Legos and then of you will go below it. So now I'm going to hot glue my Legos down and the back hinges kind of pop out a, a, quite a bit so I put those toward the middle of each of those pairs so that you can't see them too much. And then I did the same thing with the other two and just making sure that I'm pulling them in from the sides that they're kind of equidistant apart but still have a little gap in between the two so that you can tell it's two different, I guess, people. And so then I'm gonna take a black chenille stem and hot glue that in between the first two Legos, which I guess would be the boy. And then he's gonna be wrapping his arms around the girl and not letting her go. And so with the end of the chenille stem, I just kind of fashioned a, I don't know, three fingered hand and just wrapped it around and hot glued that to the back of her. So then I took a piece of jute twine and I fed it through the front after I folded it over and then just made a knot at the very top. And you guys, 
I can't get through an entire video without making at least one bow. So I used the same rose ribbon and I folded it over three times on each side and then found the middle by folding it in half and then made little teeny slits on both sides. You kind of have to do this one piece at a time, one layer at a time because of the wire edging that the ribbon has. So I just made the little slits and then I took a chenille stem, crunched it down in the middle and twisted it on the back. And then I'm gonna pull apart my poofs and make those all nice and perky to put at the top of my tag. So you guys know I like to change my mind a lot and I decided not to use this bow but now you know how to make it. I used a different kind of bow but first I put a little bit of greenery up on, on the tag so that that'll peek out under this bow that I had made before from the Dollar Tree burlap ribbon and the little um, butterfly that's also from Dollar Tree and he's a little brighter than this normally but I took some white paint and covered him up. It was originally for another project and I didn't like it and used something else but here it is all done and here they are so cozy and loving Mr. and Mrs. Lego and I think it turned out really cute and I love the whimsical look of it and how playful it is. And so even if you're using toys and things that are super cheap, I think this turned out really cute and would be cute in a kid's room or I think I'm going to leave it in my living room, but I think it turned out really cute. I hope you guys like it. So here is our writing tutorial that is being asked by everyone and I don't know how good it's going to be but hopefully you'll get something out of it. I'm starting with this paper that was my daughter's from, well she's 20 now so you know I keep everything, but it has the line in the middle so in doing just basic writing if you stick with the rule of making your letters go top to bottom and then going halfway for the smaller letters and below the line for the G's and the Y's. Just this will help you with whatever you're writing on. Um, if it's a sign or even like a birthday card, it just makes it a lot easier if you know the basics and can keep those fundamentals when you're writing. So I just wrote out some words and I don't know, cat just seems like the main word you learn when you first are learning to write. So just to give you an idea of how to write your basic letters. And then just the same fundamentals for when you're writing in cursive. And what I did is I always practiced. And so the more you practice, the better you're going to get. And then I was even having a hard time just writing in the basic cursive style because I wanted to do my little frillies and squiggly lines and stuff to make it more ornamental. So I just am writing the same words over again. And as you can see my S, the first S in Jesus, I did the little squiggly, which is more decorative versus the second S, which is just the basic, you know, handwriting 101. But no matter what, whatever your handwriting looks like, and mine doesn't look good just without the, pretties and stuff but 
if you make your letters a little bit larger and more bubbly, it makes it easier to decorate them afterwards to get them into a decorative type of font. So here are a couple of options of pens that are specialty. We have the Copic or Copic, I'm not really sure how you say them, and then the Martha Stewart Crafts pens. And these have double sides. So on one side, you have the chiseled end, and that's good for calligraphy. And then on the other side, you have kind of like the blunt marker, but it's feathered. And so when you write with it, it really is soft and lets it kind of flow as you're writing. But no matter what, when you're writing with the pen, your downstrokes are going to be heavier with the fluffy side of the pen. I'm not sure what it's called, but as opposed to the chiseled in, which you really have to know your calligraphy, how to make those strokes in order to get a calligraphy type of look. So you can't just buy a pen that says calligraphy and then expect it to write you know, in that calligraphy style. So I remember when I got a calligraphy set from my parents for Christmas one year and I thought, I was so excited, I thought I was going to now be able to write in the calligraphy style, but it doesn't work that way and you have to actually practice. So on the Martha Stewart pens, they have two sides of the calligraphy tips. One's a little bit narrower and the other one's a lot fatter. So same thing though, you have to know how to do the strokes in order to do that. And so when you're writing, you have to hold your pen at like um, a 45 degree angle and then do completely different strokes. So right here, I'm just doing the 45 degree angle method, but I'm doing a cursive writing. So it still gives it those downstrokes with the thicker lines. I'm going to link some tutorials in the description box below for calligraphy. So when you do the calligraphy, just, I mean, super short version, as you can see, I'm doing um, kind of like zigzag lines where they go in and out from left to right. So I know that doesn't make sense, but the tutorials that are on YouTube are awesome. And so if you want to learn calligraphy, check those out and start practicing. And calligraphy is really convenient to have a little bit of knowledge how to do it. And you can address envelopes like for a wedding or a birthday party or anything like that. So it comes in handy. So now I'm just going to write a simple word and this has nothing to do with calligraphy, even though I'm using a calligraphy pen. I'm just, you can use a Sharpie for this. I'm just gonna show you how to maybe spruce up your writing, but just using the basic alphabet handwriting, I'm gonna make it a little cuter by just adding small dots at the tops and bottoms of all of the open lines. So if it's not got anything connected to it, you're going to add a dot. And this is even cuter if you do it in two different colors. I mean, this is two different colors, but it's just black and blue. So, you know, something bright and cute. And then here's a couple more ways of how to kind of fancy up your printed writing. I'm just going to write pray. And I really like to use the Sharpies because they give you more control and it, you can kind of get away with um, fixing things a lot easier. So if you just go on the left sides of all of your letters and just block them or make them fatter, and you can do this like a little bit at a time, because you want to make those lines pretty much equal as far as their thickness. So just do a square or just make that one line to the left a little bit thicker than the rest, maybe two or three times thicker. And it just gives it a, a cuter look, a, a more fancy look. And just it's easier when you have a felt pen because it kind of hides a multitude of sins. So another thing that you can do is add to your lettering. 
So to start with, you can just do lines, just like when we did the little dots on the tops and bottoms of the letters, you can just do simple lines and that is one way you can just leave it like that. And on the O's, I like to add one line so it's just not there by itself and feeling lonely. So after you add those lines, you can just leave it that way. But then if you make the lines a little thicker all the way around and not just on the left sides, the whole wor word will be you know, more of a bold font. And then make the lines that you made um, you know, where the dots were, make those a little thicker too. And then that gives it a whole different look. And then you can go back a third time and add little V's at the middles of each of the lines of the letters <laughs> and blend those in so that it looks like they're just kind of poking out. And then you can go back again and just add short little lines to the areas above and below the little points in the middle, but only on the left side. So all to say, you can just keep adding to the letters and just get cuter and cuter as you keep on going. So I wanted to prove to you guys that it doesn't matter. It's not just my handwriting is really good or anything, because it's not. But I had my daughter write the word gather in her own handwriting. And I don't even think they teach uh, cursive writing anymore in school. But this is what she wrote down. And so I'm just going to take a Sharpie and go over it and then do my downstroke method, which is where you're going to make the lines thicker only on the lines that go in a downward motion. So as you can see, as you're writing, you're going up on the G and then I went a little bit down and then I'm going to go down again in the front of the G and all through there. I'm going to actually write it out so you can see what I mean and so that you understand what the difference is between the upstrokes and the downstrokes. So I'm just outlining her what she wrote and I had a lot of people comment that they hate their handwriting and that it's ugly, but I promise if you do this, it will make it gorgeous. So as you can see, I'm taking my Sharpie and I would recommend probably starting with a Sharpie just because it's so much easier, like I said, to control and it covers it um, when you make a mistake or squiggly lines, you know, um, if you shake or something. But anyway, I'm doing all the downstrokes there and making it fatter on those sides. And it just makes the word, I think, just come to life. One thing I wanted to mention too is you can see where in her writing she puts her A and her T closer together than her T and her H. And so in that case, since there's not a lot of room to the left of the T to make it thicker, you want to go to the right of it and that way it'll make it look like it's closer or more equidistant apart. And I think it turned out really cute in the end. and. It's kind of 
sentimental now because it's a mommy daughter project and I'm going to do something cute with it at the end of this video. So if you're still not convinced that you can make your own handwriting beautiful, I'm going to give you another option where if you print out a word, and in this case, this is the font called Christmas Wish, and I printed it out in Microsoft Word and then, well, I wrote it out in Microsoft Word and then printed it out on my printer. And so I'm gonna put this behind some glass and then I'm gonna use my black paint pen that I got from Walmart and I'm gonna just trace over the lettering with my own handwriting. So if you're doing a sign on wood or something, this is, a uh, not going to help you because it's not see-through but if you're doing something and you want it on glass or um, on a vase a glass vase or something of that sort where you can see through it you can put print something out and then put it either behind it or in the case of a vase you can put it inside and tape it down and then write your words on the outside so I'm just tracing along the lines and it, you know, there's nothing to it. You're just going to follow the lines. When you are writing on glass, it's a little slippery. So you want to kind of try and make sure that your hand is letting you guide your fingers so that you can keep your lines as straight as possible. Mine aren't perfectly straight, but you can, um, go back and and kind of fix those as well so now we're going to use another printed out word and this time i'm going to do it where you could do it on either um, black paper or on wood or some kind of surface that's not see-through. So I'm just going to take some white chalk, just regular chalk, and I'm going to rub it on the back all the way across the entire area that has the words on it. And you can see through the, the copy machine paper um, pretty well so you know where to scratch on your chalk. And then once you get that completely covered, you're going to place it in the area that you want to have your word put. And so using a pretty sharp, well, actually it can be dull. Either way, you're going to go through each of the letters on the outsides and just outline it. And then once you get the entire word outlined onto your surface, pull up your paper, but don't slide it off. Just pick it up gently and then the letters will be there on the surface. And then you can take a paint pen or even a white colored pencil or whatever you're gonna use, regular paint and paint brush and paint on your surface so that you have your sign. And try not to do what I just did right there where I pick up my pen in the middle of a stroke. You can get to what I call resting places where it's an intersection or some place where it's not gonna show if you do pick up your pen because as you can see, it will leave a mark, you know, that's a little bit darker and not completely flowy or connected. So after you get that all on the sheet or the surface that you're painting on, you can go back, but you have to wait for it to dry because when you go in on top with paint, on top of paint, it will pick up the first layer if it's not all the way dry. And also, once it does dry, you can erase the chalk lines with your hand. And if you miss any, you can go back in with a just barely even wet, just not even moist, just, I don't know, huff on it or something but that will get the rest of the chalk off of the surface and then any of the squiggly lines or mess ups you did you can go back in after it's completely dry and fix those all up And 
And I think this is pretty enough to frame. And so even though it's not your own lettering, it was made by your own hands. And so that makes it special. So now that you kind of get an idea of how to do the downstroke method for your cursive writing, we're going to do a little project on one of these canvases from the Dollar Tree. And I just took some chalk paint in the ballet slipper color and I mixed it with a whole bunch of water and I want to give it kind of a watercolor look. So I just took a fan brush and swiped a few swipes on there and adding water and making sure that I don't go all the way to the ends of the canvas on the right and left or the top and bottom. So I just, I really want this to look like um, some watercolor. So after I did that, then I took my gel pen, well it's it's called a chalk pen from Dollar Tree in gray, but it's more like a gel pen of some sort. So it had a different look than I was expecting, but I really like how it turned out. So when you do the P's, any of your letters that have closed areas like your S's or your P's, um, I like to kind of leave them open and do a little curl or a loop and then come back out and move into your next letter. On the R's, if you take the little round part at the top left corner and make it a little bit enlarged and then move on to the next letters, it kind of just makes it a little more fancy. And then also when you finish on the ends of any of your words, make a curly cue or, you know, kind of make that a little more pronounced and makes it look a, a lot more elegant and fun. So like on the Y, you know, just kind of going in a continuing motion instead of just stopping at the line of the Y. So I wanted to do something cute with the little gather that my daughter drew or wrote. And so I put it in this frame and I added a little bow from that Dollar Tree tag that we did earlier. And I put it on some scrapbook paper in the background and then edged it with some pink ink pad um, ink. And so I think this turned out really cute and I love that it was done by both of us. So I am telling you guys, you can do this on your own. Don't forget to go stop by Heidi's channel at Happily Thriving Heidi. Make sure you tell her I said hi. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.